Tennessee at Arkansas, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a night game. Tennessee is favored by 13 and a half points, and the over-under is set at 59 and a half. Arkansas, of course, coming off the loss to Texas A&M there at Jerry World, and Tennessee coming off the win at Oklahoma in Norman, um, greeting Oklahoma into the SEC a couple of weeks ago on a bye week last week. So Tennessee is freshened up for this one, um, mostly freshened up. We'll talk some injuries or whether or not there'll be injuries to, to be concerned with this weekend. Um, look, I mean, Tennessee is a 13.5 point favorite in this football game for a reason. Uh, and, and we'll kind of get into some of those reasons here uh, as we break this one down. Nico Iamaliava <clears throat> is having a great season, okay? Has it been perfect? No, he hasn't played, I don't think, any just unbelievable football game yet. But he's doing everything that he needs to do as a quarterback of the Tennessee Vols right now because the identity of this team is running the football. And they're really, really damn good at it. And, and got a group of guys that, you know, quite frankly, I would put up against just about any running back group, you know, in, in the SEC right now. Um, Tennessee is a run first football team right the second while they polish up the passer that is Nico Iamaliava. Tennessee's offensive line. This has been the biggest question for this offense the, since the preseason. And it's not been really a question. It's a great group. But number 53 listed there, Mr. Lance Hurd, missed the Oklahoma game and caused a whole lot of shuffling around on that offensive line. This team has allowed six sacks this season. That's good for 44th nationally. They've ran the ball really well. Great run blocking group. Whenever this offensive line has been mixed up a little bit, you know, uh, filling in for so-and-so, moving everybody around, it's, it's been a little bit rocky. Um, but honestly, I felt like, I felt like the, the second group of guys that came in and the third group of guys that came in felt like they did enough against a really, really good Oklahoma defense a couple of weeks ago. But we'll have to just see if Lance Hurd is going to be able to make, you know, this football game. That's going to make a big, big difference in this one to me, whether or not Tennessee wins this thing by 17 or possibly 21 or 24 in this football game. Um, we're going to talk Arkansas here in a minute. The strength of their defense is their defensive line. And while they're not crazy deep, those starting guys are pretty doggone good. What do you think about this Tennessee offense going against this Arkansas defense in this one? Um, I think it has a lot to do with how healthy Tennessee is on that offensive line. I think that will translate to, uh, you know, a better day on Saturday, obviously, going against what I think is a pretty good, pretty good D-line group for Arkansas. Yeah, it is a pretty good D-line group. And, um, you know, Arkansas right now is, is plus two in the turnover margin per game. So to me, I'm looking at Nico and I'm wondering if, if he's going to be able to protect the football so far. He's been pretty good at that. Only only two interceptions so far, but keep the ball off the ground, uh, limit the turnovers that that that's one thing that um, Arkansas's defense is going to want to do is to to get turnovers in this game. They need extra possessions. They need all the help they can get, really, uh, when you're going up against this uh, Tennessee offense. But I, I like the offensive line. I, I, I do feel like it's the weakest point on the offense, but it's not a weak unit, right? It, it, it's, it's really not. It's it's an upper half uh, of the SEC at worst. Um, and and I think that, you know, getting Lance Hurd back would be um, a huge step in the right direction as well. But um, but ultimately, I mean, the, the, the Vols offense is the strength of this team, you know, and, and, um, and I think – uh, I, I think that Arkansas is going to have their hands full with this one. I, and really, it, the the matchup for me is is the offense for Arkansas against the defense for Tennessee. I know we'll get to that here in a minute. But um, to me, I, I know that Tennessee's offense is going to put up some points in this game. Um, I, I'm wondering if Arkansas is going to be able to hold serve and and score whenever they need to as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's a big question mark, and hence the almost two touchdown spread there. Um, yeah, let's talk about that Tennessee defense. It's been a really, really good one, Mason. 
this defensive line group has a chance to be a historic defensive line group at Tennessee. It's really talented. It's really deep. And it's just really good all around. 50.75 yards per game rushing allowed. This is the same defensive line group that allowed Oklahoma to rush for 32 yards in their football game, right? So whenever this team zones in on a run game, they've been really, really good at limiting it. Now, I'm interested to see how Tennessee handles a running quarterback, which Taylor Green definitely is. We'll talk about Taylor Green and, and the issues that he kind of presents in the run game. Um, and, and this has been a good offensive group for Arkansas as far as yardage, you know, converting on third down. We're going to go over some of their stats, and they're going to surprise you guys. They just haven't exactly turned it all into points. And Tennessee has been a team that has barely even let anybody in the red zone. So uh, this is literally an immovable object here on this defensive line. Uh, you see some of the guys that we have listed here. There's a ton of them that aren't listed here. There's, there's, I could make three different slides with four different guys on each slide, you know, and, and they've all contributed in one way or another on this defensive line. And I don't, I don't suspect that that's going to change. I think that that's going to continue. You're going to see the, you're going to continue to see tons of rotation, keep bodies fresh. We'll see if Oklahoma, or excuse me, we'll see if Arkansas is able to, you know, whenever they trade players out, maybe they, maybe they get. Tennessee in some type of defense that they like, some kind of personnel that they like, and maybe go hurry up a little bit in this football game. I wouldn't be surprised to see that and try to trap some guys out there that maybe you want. Um, but pick your poison on this defensive group here, at least in the front seven for the defense. And I love a guy who's not listed here, uh, Keenan Peely. Love that guy there in the middle of the defense. Um, I know he had had a little bit of an injury. I assume that he is – back uh ready to go I, I know he went down and then i think maybe came back in the game in the oklahoma game if i'm not mistaken i think he came back in um but uh, you tennessee fans can let us know in the comment section if he'll be you know 100 percent ready to go um but he's he's the he's the play caller the signal caller on this defense he's the field general out there and he's out there to lay some serious lumber um what what's your overall thoughts on this defense you know, it, it hasn't been one that's been, like, going and getting a ton of sacks. Uh, but you can also point to a lot of the offenses that they played really getting rid of the football quickly, um, knowing that they're not going to have much time, um, hence the fact that there hasn't been many plays downfield on this Tennessee defense in this 2024 season. Yeah, and, and that kind of feeds right into Taylor Green and his skill set. Um, Look, we know he's good with his legs, but he can hold the ball a little bit too long. I'm concerned with him as a passer in this football game, going against this defensive line for Tennessee. Um, he, he tends to to really try to just make plays uh, a little bit too much and and not just throw the football away. It's cost them. Uh, it cost them in the Oklahoma State game. You know, he was just kind of holding the football a little bit too long. Made a had a few miscues there, uh, but to me. My question for the Tennessee defense in this game is: is can um, can they contain Taylor Green? Can can because what what he's able to do with his legs can really diffuse the pass rush of Tennessee. Um, if if they if they over pursue, he he can he can take it up the middle if he needs to. Um, but can can Tennessee maintain their containment on the outside? Uh, because having to having to account for the legs of this quarterback uh, can really cause havoc on any defense, um, and and in particular the secondary of of Tennessee. They're they're gonna have to they're gonna have to keep eyes on uh, Taylor Green in the backfield, which causes a lot more man coverage on the back end of the defense. So that's that's the chess match that I'm looking for uh, in this football game is how they contain Taylor Green on the outside, um, and and if the uh, the deep defensive backs for Tennessee are able to hold up against a, a really good wide receiver unit uh, for Arkansas. I mean, they could they could really struggle in man coverage against the uh, Razorbacks in this one. But uh, ultimately, I, I think that it, it really starts up front for, uh, with the defensive line for Tennessee and whether or not they can get home uh, on Taylor Green or at least contain him and keep him inside the pocket and force him to make some throws. 
let's talk about Taylor Green uh, in this offense. Taylor Green, of course, coming over from Boise State, has had a really, really good career. Um, you know, 44 touchdowns responsible for. You're right, Mason. He, he's been a little bit of a deer in the headlights at certain moments throughout this season. And then at other moments, he's been really, really unbelievable. Uh, honestly, his play a little bit re reminds me of, you know, Nico in a sense. Yeah. Um, I could see Nico and him, you know, kind of like doing the same stuff. I mean, uh, these guys are built the same. They run really similar. I feel like, you know, arm wise, uh, just in two totally, obviously different teams and, and Taylor Green is not blessed to have some of the teammates that Nico does there at uh, at Tennessee, obviously. But yeah, right. This this wide receiver group for Arkansas, if they have time to get the ball out, they've got some great wide receivers. They really do. Armstrong is a really really good one. Um, they've ran the ball really successfully this season. We'll kind of look at some of their stats and stuff. But it, it's going to all start with that group up front offensively for Arkansas. And the two tackles that you bring in in the offseason were a huge, huge pickup. That was the biggest bugaboo for Arkansas last season is the fact that the ex-offensive line coach, Sam Pittman, didn't have an offensive line at Arkansas last year. I mean, it was no secret. They were just one of the worst in the country. You bring in Fernando Carmona, uh, Keyshawn Blackstock. Those guys go to your tackle spots. The Joshua Braun, Patrick uh Cutis, Cutis, whatever, however you pronounce that. Those were your tackles last year. Um, so they scoot in to the interior there. And then you you got Addison Nichols that you promote from within there to take over the start and center spot. Um, and you don't have a ton of guys behind them that you're just like, wow, okay, we're, we got to get him on the field somehow, right? That's not exactly this offensive line group. It's not crazy deep, but it's a lot better than it's been the last couple of seasons. And I told you you'd be a little bit surprised at some of these numbers. And I don't know why we would be surprised, honestly, because Bobby Petrino, everywhere he's went, where he's actually had control of the offense, you know, minus Texas A&M last year where Jimbo wouldn't release the stack of papers on the sideline. This guy been really good everywhere he's went, and this is no exception. This is his first season at Arkansas, and, you know, I hate to say it, I hope nothing happens to Sam Pittman as far as getting fired or whatever, but if he does, Bobby Petrino is probably the one taking that job. <laughs> and um, he's he's leaving his mark on this offense. 21st in the country, rushing yards per game. Um, third in the country, plays 10-plus 10, 10 yards. This is an explosive offense. They explode. Third down conversions, they're really good on third down as well. So not only are they explosive, but they're getting yards on first and second down through the rush game, and, and they're staying ahead of the sticks. So it's just been being able to put points on the board and the turnovers. Um, and really, the red zone touchdown percentage is not bad, 70.83. That's 33rd in the country. It's, it's the sacks allowed, right? Taking sacks when you don't need to take sacks. It's putting balls into spots you don't need to put balls in there. It, it's stuff that is very correctable. Very, very correctable. And I, with Bobby Petrino at the helm, I fully suspect that by the end of the season, you're not going to be seeing some of the same mistakes that you saw early in the season with Taylor Green. This has been a learning curve for him. I love his ability to be able to read defenses and know to either keep it or hand it off. He seems really, really good in that read option game. The, the, the mistakes that he needs to clean up, I think can be cleaned up over time, and, and I don't think it's something that has to be completely done in the offseason. I, I think they can correct some of this stuff now, um, although it may be tough to do it this week uh, with not having a lot of time back there. What do you think about overall this this Arkansas offense? I know we've kind of talked about it a little bit already, um, but Andrew Armstrong, uh, a really, really nice piece there in uh, the wide receiver room. Some of these other guys are just kind of, you know, just kind of dudes. I really like Jaquindon Jackson there at the running back position. That guy's a hoss, um, replacing Rocket Sanders from last year. I think he's done a pretty good job in that situation. And um, bless old Rocket Sanders' heart from last year. Uh, he didn't have the offensive line that Jaquindon Jackson had either. But um, what do you think about this offense overall for 2024? Pretty good numbers for Arkansas. I wasn't expecting the numbers to turn out that well. 
um, pretty clear what they've got to clean up. Yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you uh, how, how much of an impact an offensive coordinator can make on a team. Um, and this is really the side of the football that I'm I'm interested in watching. I, I want to see the chess match between Bobby Petrino and Tim Banks. How, how can how can Tim Banks, the, the defense coordinator for Tennessee, handle this offensive scheme with a rushing quarterback that's that can really run it? Uh, I don't, you know, I don't think Jackson Arnold was uh, necessarily the uh, the the talent with his legs that Taylor Green is, uh, and then you throw in Jaquinton Jackson, who's w- way better as a running uh, running back than anybody on uh, Oklahoma's roster. Uh, the guy's already got nine touchdowns on the year. I mean, you look at you look at the passing touchdowns for uh, Arkansas, and they've got uh, five on the year. No no receiver has more than one for Arkansas. And the reason for that is because Jaquin and Jackson is just hogging them all. Him and Taylor Green, Taylor Green's got four on the year as well. So 13 on the ground between the two of them. Uh, and, and, you know, but, but the receivers are getting the production. I mean, Armstrong's got 420 yards, uh, uh, receiving so far this year. Sategna has got 240. Uh, Tesla has over 200 as well. So they're they're getting the production and the wide receiving room. They're just not getting the touchdowns. I do think that they will need to convert a lot of those uh, passing plays to touchdowns in this football game. I don't think that that running the football is going to be all that effective uh, for this Arkansas team that that's going to need to score touchdowns. This isn't you, you can't get down get down the field and and kick a field goal. Um, that's not really going to do it against Tennessee. However, I will say that if if you're able to get those long methodical drives that we saw Kentucky do against Ole Miss last week, um, then that could really help Arkansas in this in this game and and could uh, lead to a win for them. Uh, but but ultimately, yeah, I, I really like Bobby Petrino. I really like him in this offensive system with Taylor Green at quarterback. I think it's a perfect fit for what Bobby Petrino likes to do. Um, he's in, in places he's been most successful. He's had rushing quarterbacks. You look at with the Falcons, he had Michael Vick. Uh, you look at with Louisville, he had uh, Lamar Jackson. I mean, Taylor Green kind of is that guy. So um, it, it, it's it's a pretty dangerous situation. I don't think we've seen the best of this offense yet. Um, and, I mean, boy, they could really make a statement if they could hang 30 on this Tennessee defense this week. That would be a statement. We'll see. <laughs> it's a, it would be a statement, but <laughs> not saying it's going to happen, y'all. I'm just saying, well, hey, right. if, they first, 70, if, they 70, the if they score 70, if they score 70, if they score 70, that's saying something. You know, uh, I, I'm just out here breaking news, y'all. Oh, man. Hot take Tommy. Um, no, we got to play devil's advocate here on the first and long college football show. And look, Arkansas is a better football team than the public understands. Um, they don't have all the wins this year, but I'm telling you right now, this is a much improved football team. And I went from earlier in the season thinking, you know what, Sam Pittman needs to be fired, to, you know what, maybe we're on to something. If they can hold on to Bobby Petrino, you know, at offensive coordinator, maybe this team's on to something. But it's going to take more than one year to do it. And and they they've got – more than they can chew on this week. The, the only thing they've really got going for them is this game's at home. But let's let's talk about this defense, okay? Because I, I kind of want to talk about this defense versus that Tennessee offense. We didn't – we talked about the Tennessee offensive line, but we didn't talk about a lot of the playmakers. So I just want to kind of talk about those playmakers versus what we're going to see in this football game as far as defensively for Arkansas. Um, pictured right there is, is Landon Jackson, uh, Mr. Clean there. Um, he's a bad dude. Landon Jackson is a bad dude. Eric Gregory, Cameron Ball, um, they, they've got some dudes on this defensive line that are tough to deal with. I mean, they really are. Now, can you lean on these guys throughout the game and then in the fourth quarter, you know, it, it, you start to see the, the, you know, the, the wearing down of that defensive line? Absolutely. They, they're not deep. They're not real deep. Um, but this front group, you know, if they can get you off the field and, and conserve snaps, then watch out. They can hang in there throughout the football game, and they can really cause you a headache. Where this team really is just not very good is explosive plays from scrimmage, and most of those were in the passing game. 
and just passing yards per game in general allowed per game, 226.4. That's good for 89th in the country. Teams have made their hay against Arkansas through the air, and they've done it pretty consistently this season. Tennessee, we haven't really seen, and this is early in the season, we haven't seen Tennessee play like a ton of, you know, crazy opponents or whatever. But in the big game so far this season, we haven't seen Tennessee, like, go crazy through the air or anything. This is an opportunity, I think, for Tennessee to be able to do that. I think if Tennessee – and they're obviously run first. I get it. They're always going to run the football first. We've got to establish the run. Dylan Sampson is is the man. That spin move is crazy. So that's all without – you know, that goes without saying. But Tennessee's going to have an opportunity to air it out a little bit in this football game. And I want to see what they can do against the secondary. Um, you know, Thornton, uh, Dante Thornton, been the leading receiver this year, 242 yards. His average is, is at 34.6 yards per reception this season with three touchdowns. You know, I, I want to see more of that guy. Brew McCoy, we've got to get him in the end zone this game. There's no reason not to get him in the end zone. Chris Brazel has been, you know, uh, uh, just a godsend this season. He's been really, really, really good. Uh, Squirrel White, uh, we need to get him in the end zone. He hasn't been able to get in the end zone. And and so I'm not saying Tennessee needs to go throw the ball because they want to throw the ball or they want to score touchdowns through the air. I think this is an opportunity that Tennessee's going to have in this football game, at least early in the football game, to be able to stretch this defense out. And then Tennessee's going to have it in any way they want it the rest of the game. I don't know that this is an offensive line that you can necessarily just say, we're going to pound it up the middle on every SEC team that we face, no matter what. I don't know that the Tennessee's offensive line is that, necessarily. And they're going to face a little bit of resistance early on in this football game from this defensive line. I want to see them put the ball up over the top of this defense. I know they can protect long enough to be able to do it. I want to see it with my own two eyes. Let's see Nico unleash the beast, baby. What do you think about this uh, Arkansas defense? Some of the stats you guys can see there on the screen, nothing really that great. They're decent against the rush, 93 yards per game. That's really, really good. Um, you know, I, I don't think they're holding Tennessee to 93 yards rushing. Uh, Tennessee is one of the rushing teams in the country. Um, but I, it's conceivable to think that this Arkansas defense could hold the Tennessee rush game in check maybe into the third quarter or so. Yeah, maybe maybe early on I could see that, um, and and that that's when if you're Nico, you got to go over the top, right? We see that Arkansas has has given up a lot of explosives so far this year. So if if the running game's not there early, maybe you, maybe you go over top uh, early in this game, earlier than you normally would in this game, and you kind of pass to set up the run, which is counter to what Tennessee uh, really has done. Um, all year long, but but when I when I look at the the defense for Arkansas, I, I think that Xavier Sori has been a bright light for this defense uh, in in the middle linebacker position. Uh, he leads the team in tackles. Uh, he has been causing havoc in the backfield, um, and ultimately, I look at what he's able to do against the tight ends for Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee has been going to the tight ends a little bit more than usual uh, this season. And so, you know, when they go to a 12 personnel set, how do the how do the linebackers match up? Um, I, I, I could see Stays getting involved in this game. Um, I could see Kitzelman getting involved in this game. Uh, and, and ultimately, I, I do think that Tennessee is going to have success. They're going to be able to, to spread Arkansas out. Um, and then you'll, you'll see Nico take some shots in this game as well. He's got a great deep ball. Um, I, I think you see more of that this week uh, against Arkansas. Ar Arkansas's defense is going to have their hands full for sure. Give us your pick in this one, Mason. Uh, for this one, I think it's kind of a no-brainer. Um, you know, so far this year, Tennessee's 4-0 against the spread. 13 and a half points. I like that it's just under two touchdowns. I like Tennessee to cover uh, at 13 and a half. I have no idea on the over under because I, I could see this one getting a little bit out of hand and, and Tennessee putting up, you know, 50 points on their own. Uh, but, but I also like Arkansas to score a little bit, at least early in the football game. But I, I think that overall the depth for Arkansas is going to be a concern in this football game. Um, Tennessee may only be up by, by a, a touchdown at half or something like that. But I think in the second half, 
um, they they kind of run away with it and end up winning by about 20 points. Yeah. I could definitely see a backdoor cover in this one, no doubt about it. I, I think it'll be a little slow going at first. It, it'll all depend on Tennessee's ability to get over the top, like we talked about. And I do want to mention, you were talking about the tight ends for Tennessee. They're going to be matched up on the linebackers here in this one. It was widely known that Arkansas was just dangerously low on on talented bodies in the linebacker room going into this season. Now, I think they've been able to answer a little bit of those questions with Xavier Sori that came over from Georgia. He's actually, it seems like he's panning out. He's not, I'm not saying that he's you know going to win the linebacker of the year award or anything like that, but it seems like he's panning out. So it's just an area to watch. I think you're on something there with the tight ends. I, I could see this being a game where, and it seems like Nico has a uh, really likes to go towards the middle of the field. I mean, I, I we have a limited sample size for him, so so we'll see. You know how that kind of changes over his career over the next couple of years. But seems like he really feels comfortable going to the middle of the field there in this offense, and with the linebackers kind of being in the shape that they are. I could see that being a big possibility in this one. Look, guys, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not an idiot. I'm not taking Arkansas plus 13 and a half here. I, I just, you know, am I betting on this one at all? Probably not. I'm probably not going to bet on this one. And here's the reason why. I just got to, I got to see Nico go on the road and do it one more time. Let's see him do it. And, and if Arkansas can somehow put the game in his hands, you know, and, and they're in this football game late, how does he respond? I mean, you know, I got all the faith in the world in the guy. I love Nico. I know he's going to be really good. He's going to be a Tennessee great. Possible, I think he's got a really good chance to win a national championship before he leaves out of Tennessee. But he's still a young guy, and there's still a learning curve in this league, and we've seen it more this year than any. It's tough to go on the road and win. It's tough to win SEC matchups. And to do it by multiple possessions, multiple touchdowns, it's just really, really hard to do. If I had to guess, I'd take Tennessee minus 13 and a half. I think they can do it. I think they're good enough. Over under at 59 and a half, I would take the under in that one. Yeah, um, but, you know, there's a chance Tennessee scores 57 by themselves or something. So uh, beware, <laughs> buyer beware on that one. <laughs>